Like a Dragon Gaiden, the game with the really long name, is the newest entry in the Yakuza or Like a Dragon series as it's now known. This is the first entry since Lost Judgment back in 2021 to be a completely brand new release, as since then we've only had ports and a remake known as Like a Dragon Ishin. Speaking of new, I'm going to talk about a lot of new things in this game. I'll start with the things you'll be interacting with for a majority of the main game. This game has a brand new fighting style known as the Agent Style. This fighting style is quite unique in the series, as rather than relying on your own bare hands or a weapon, you instead utilize a bunch of fancy gadgets and gizmos to fight. The main character Kiryu does have a second fighting style that plays much more like a traditional fighting style in previous games. In fact, it's so traditional that it's copied directly from Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2. The Yakuza style as it's known in Gaiden is Kiryu's Dragon of Dojima fighting style, which has always been available in every game you can play as Kiryu in, with it only ever receiving two changes over the years, being a visual overhaul in Yakuza 5 and a complete overhaul in Yakuza 6. But has this fighting style, which has remained dormant for about six years, received another overhaul? Well, a big thing is obviously the name, with it being called the Yakuza style for no reason at all in the English version of the game. Which is ironic because it's always been basically known as the Dragon style, but the series was called Yakuza, and then now that the series is called Like a Dragon, they decided to rename the fighting style to Yakuza. Anyway, in terms of what's different with Kiryu's Dragon style, there really isn't all too much. The charged light attack can do the full beast combo, which maybe it could in Kiwami 2 with upgrades or something, I don't know, but it can't transition into a regular light attack combo. Although, the charged heavy attack seems to work the exact same way. Upgrading ability costs money, just like it does in Yakuza 0, which means we finally go back to the interesting balance of deciding what to spend your money on, although this time you don't get a million yen for sneezing. Seems like for the Yakuza style most of the upgrades are from Kiwami 2, but there's some shared stuff such as taunting an enemy while they're downed, which is from Lost Judgment. Kiryu has regained access to his resolute counter from the brawler style back in Yakuza 0, which Kaito got in the Kaito files, and which Yagami got in Judgment. His throw is also his old brawler throw from 0, instead of the shitty spin throw from 6 and Kiwami Kiwami 2. Besides all that, it's mostly just Kiryu from Kiwami 2. Now for the bigger thing, being Kiryu's agent style. His gadgets, which I mentioned earlier, are a unique twist in the gameplay that the series hasn't seen so far. However, beyond his gadgets, this fighting style plays functionally the same to other fighting styles from the other games. So it has combo attacks and finishes, a normal grab, heat action, and so on and so forth. But with his gadgets, the first ones are the rocket boots, which can be activated by holding the sprint button in combat. You can still tap the sprint button in combat to start sprinting, and in case you were curious, the game does still have the option to enable automatic sprinting when in combat. These control quite goofily, but you can bash into enemies while they're active and hit them, or you can cheese the game and generate a stupid amount of heat by smashing your way through environmental objects. Don't know why they let you do that, but it is very funny. The next gadget can be activated by doing a charged light attack, which doesn't function like it does in Kiwami 2, where you do a big strong attack, as instead you just chuck a freaking grenade at people. Then you can hold down heavy attack, which again is unlike the Yakuza style, where you do a big strong attack, as instead you summon a bunch of drones to attack enemies with. Then finally, you can hold down grab, which will shoot out a massive Spider-Man web, which will bind enemies it hits. After grabbing them, you can just leave them be and ignore them, or fling them around or punch them in the face and all that sort of stuff. You can get up to apparently 50 drones, which is insane, and you can pick up weapons from a distance with this spiderweb thing, but it's really freaking hard to do. Just like with Lost Judgment and its three main fighting styles, Agent Style has a whole array of different animations that make it unique. For example, picking up objects has a different animation now. And there's even a cutscene where Kiryu goes and changes up his stance, further emphasizing the difference between them. Thought that was worth mentioning because Judgment, which also had two fighting styles, had mostly shared animations between the styles. Then the other main thing you interact with is the new areas. So firstly, you play in Yokohama from Yakuza Like a Dragon, and Sotenbori from Yakuza 2, although more accurately it's from Yakuza Kiwami 2, as this is the version from that game. However, they have added back a park that used to exist in Sotenbori that was cut out of Kiwami 2, which I mentioned back in 2021, and then no one else gave a shit, and now they've added it back, so I mean, hey Yokoyama, I know you're watching this. The Yokohama you get to play in is also the one from Like a Dragon, which makes sense in terms of the timeline, but this little building here in Lost Judgment was retconned to have been there for years, so I don't know what's up with that. It's also heavily restricted, and I don't think that's because of where I'm at in the story. Whether or not Seryu High is still there from Lost Judgment, I don't know at the time of recording this, but I'll try and look for it in some footage. But more importantly, there is a brand new playable area known as the Castle. It's significantly smaller than other maps of the series, especially Yokohama, but it is incredibly detailed and looks absolutely stunning. There's lots to do in this new area, although most of the things you can do are mini games that are mostly from previous games, although there are a couple of ones that are 
technically new. The returning mini games are Poker, Blackjack, Darts, Pool, which has finally returned after like seven years, Daytona USA, which I know is a big deal, Pocket Circuit Racing, which again is back after seven years, and then mostly just arcade and other similar sort of games from Lost Judgment. Of these mini games, something worth pointing out is the slightly reworked Cabaret minigame. It still plays the exact same way, i.e. an exhilarating minigame where all you do is pick a bunch of dialogue choices, but if you just pick what you want, you get smacked in the back of the head, so you just sit there with a guide to know what's right, and it's incredibly boring, and I was so glad that the more recent games didn't have the minigame, then they brought it back. I'm so I'm so happy right now. As per the tradition of this minigame, however, the ladies you speak to are real people. Although rather than them being scanned into the game, this game just straight up recorded them talking to you, and just chucked their videos into the game, and took up apparently like 500 gigabytes with them. This is new for this minigame, but in reality, it's not a new concept for the series, as previously Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2 did the exact same things with their respective online chat and photo shooting mini games. And then also they've done real videos for things like Yakuza 0's minigame, if you can even call it that, where you watch videos, and stuff like one of the new karaoke songs from Lucky Dragon Ishin, where it also had real footage of real people. Another thing that's the same but kind of different is that in previous games, after you complete the main story, you can equip your character in various outfits. Although I say that, but for some stupid reason, Judgment and Lost Judgment don't let you do that. In specifically a sequel to a Japan-only spin-off on the PSP, and specifically Like a Dragon Ishin that came out this year, you could edit your appearance before beating the main game. But now you actually have a lot of new choices for customization, as well as having the option of having different sets to swap to, and a set that appears in battle and one outside of battle. There's a surprising amount of customization, although admittedly this is quite bare bones compared to a lot of other video games, but still, it's nice to have. And now finally, this game saw the return of the arena. The arena, or Colosseum, or whatever you want to call it, was an entirely combat-focused minigame that appeared in almost every single game up until Yakuza 6, where it was removed and began to dissipate. Considering that Ishin at the start of this year was basically a port, it was last seen in Kiwami 2, or Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise, if you want to count that, but then ignoring remakes or remasters of any description, it was actually last in Yakuza 0. But first and foremost, the arena features a completely unique feature of being able to pick your playable character. There was a pre-order bonus, which is now a paid DLC that allows you to play as Majima for the first time since Yakuza Kiwami 2, Sajima for the first time since Yakuza 5, and Daigo for the first time ever. And Majima is stuck with using his shitty mad dog style, so I'm renaming it to Like a Dragon Garden, TBH Majima, you're pretty lame. Now the arena features multiple challenge types like previous games, such as 100 Man Brawl and various challenge cup things, but you can create a team, which is again something unique to this game, that consists of characters such as Majima, Sajima, and Daigo, but then also, once again, pretty much whoever the hell you want. So beyond the ability to swap playable characters and create a team of dudes to help you fight, this is just your standard arena, but it's nice to have it come back with some cool new stuff. Now if you've never played either of the Judgments, or you're completely unfamiliar with them, the next few things we're going to talk about might be a bit confusing. So to help you gain an understanding, when Judgment came out, the general reaction that everyone had to the gameplay was, Ooh, damn! Oh, holy shit! <laughs> Hell yeah! But then when Lost Judgment came out, being Judgment's direct sequel, the general reaction to Judgment's combat became, oh damn, oh holy shit, oh hell no. Now this wasn't because Judgment suddenly became bad or anything, but instead that Lost Judgment made so many major and minor changes to the gameplay, improving the flow and rhythm of the combat, adding a lot of new tools, fixing problems that the first game might have had, and overall just creating an experience that in comparison made Judgment feel worse. This game, much to my dismay as the number one Lost Judgment fan, plays much more like Judgment than it does like Lost Judgment. Now obviously having two fighting styles instead of three or four is one reason, but the biggest reason is that the general flow, speed, and some of the mechanics make it a lot more like Judgment. However, there are still some things from Lost Judgment that are carried over into this game. Firstly, there was a mechanic in Lost Judgment called Mortal Reversals, where a strong enemy goes to do a strong attack, and you would then have to dodge it at the right time to do a counterattack. These are in Gaiden, and they seemingly function the exact same way, although there are some upgrades you can get to do follow-up attacks after doing them. Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2 had a thing where your attacks would constantly bounce off of an enemy's guard, but then Judgment got rid of that. However, Judgment still would randomly spit in your face, and your attacks could still bounce for some reason. Lost Judgment then completely remove that, however, when an enemy went to do one of those big strong attacks, your attacks would bounce off them. This is actually a good thing though, because if you could just hit through it, you'd probably not be able to stop attacking and you would get punched in the head. So far it seems like your grabs can bounce off an enemy in the same sort of way that attacks can bounce in Judgment, but I swear when I played the demo, which I'll discuss later, regular attacks kept bouncing off of enemies, so either I haven't observed it yet, or they 
changed it? Another thing from specifically Lost Judgment are some status ailments. These include bleed, where you bleed, surprise, surprise, and agony, where the victim can't evade once inflicted. It seems like it is just all Lost Judgment status effects and they all function the same, although for some reason the agony one seems like it only affects enemies, maybe? Or at least the description in the help menu says it does. And I saw an enemy throw dust at me, but there's no description for blind, so maybe that's not in the game. But the funniest part about all of this is that the forward evade strike in Yakuza 6 was just weirdly easy to cheese with. In Kiwami 2 it seemed like enemies were more likely to evade out of the way, although in all honesty I wouldn't be surprised if that was a PC port thing. But it doesn't matter anyway because the forward evade strike inflicts agony now, so good luck dodging losers. Another thing from the Judgment games is the ability to smoke. Why? Wait, why is this a thing? Anyway, another another thing from the judgments, although more specifically Lost Judgment, is the super easy ways in which you can juggle enemies. And also from this time entirely Lost Judgment, although it was from much older games in the series, there is a mechanic called wall bounding. The juggling and the wall bounding both work exactly like Lost Judgment, which is nice to see. Next, Yakuza 6 introduced a mechanic called Extreme Heat, where once whatever amount of required heat was built up, you can activate it. In 6, you gain access to some different heat actions and other heat related moves, but the only thing that changed with basic attacks was just your life attack combo. Judgment had EX boost, which was the same mechanic, but they changed it so that you became completely invincible, hilariously, as well as a few other things that Lost Judgment got rid of, but notably your combo speed increased, your ability to swap fighting cells became much easier, and most notabliest, there was a special heavy attack combo you could do that was unique between the two styles. Lost Judgment changed it up a bit, but you could still do the heavy attack combo, as well as each style getting a unique EX boost grab. Now then, how does EX boost slash extreme heat work in Gaiden? Well, in extreme heat it seems like you can always do mortal reversals, maybe, perhaps, or at least something similar. In agent style it seems like you lock on like it's the Batman Arkham games, and I say agent style because I have yet to notice that it behaves like that in Yakuza style. You're overall a bit stronger, but it's not like in the judgments where you have a different heavy attack combo, and that's because seemingly in agent style, what would be the heavy combo becomes the light attack combo. Yakuza style also gets the old extreme heat rush combo, but at the end of the combo, rather than it just becoming that combo. You can also automatically pick up weapons when attacking in extreme heat, just like the beast style from Yakuza 0. You also get access to a few more heat actions and stuff, so overall, it's a bit of a combination of extreme heat and EX boost except you aren't invincible. And now the final thing from the judgments was that every item in your inventory was locked to 10 items each, just like in Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2, but items that were specifically meant for healing, as well as some drinks and stuff, were locked to a maximum of 3. Judgment had a skill you could unlock to increase how many you could carry, but Lost Judgment did not. This was done to nerf healing items to make the game a bit more challenging, but unfortunately for them, eating food, especially sushi sets, was 100 times more effective than healing items, and you could hold 10 of them. However, this was because the higher tier of each of the special medicine items was actually the traditional minimum tier, so just Toughness Z for example, which again was to nerf healing items. Now this was a long-winded explanation to say that Gaiden just says, nah screw it, here you go, here's all the higher tier medicine items back, who gives a shit about balancing? Now then, from Yakuza Like a Dragon, this game has various status and attack type resistances, as you can see here, which can be altered by equipping gear and accessories, with equipment being just like it is in all the other games. However, you can't equip weapons from your inventory and can only get them off the ground, which just thought I I would like to point out that I made a video back on the 6th of February this year where I pointed out that every game up to 6 had equipable weapons, which were then brought back in Kiwami 2, Gone in Judgment, back in Like a Dragon, Gone in Lost Judgment, back in Ishin Kiwami, and then I made a spot on prediction that they wouldn't be in Gaiden but would be in Infinite Wealth, and people doubted me even though I was right, so boom. Now some gameplay stuff specifically from the remake of Ishin. The big huge giant dudes from the Battle Dungeon are in the game, although they are only in the arena, and I hope that's it because they suck and I hate them. I, w I wish they just weren't in any of the games at all. But another thing from Ishin, although I guess a mission from Ishin, is that there are no damage numbers that show up like in that game. Which I mean, oh well, not a big deal, but they were nice to have. I also have no idea still to this day if it was a thing in the Ishin remake or it's always been a thing, but that game let you deal more damage if you attack an enemy from behind. Which I only know because of the damage numbers, but at least Infinite Wealth has that mechanic. And great transition, because once you beat Gaiden, you unlock a special demo for the upcoming Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is a game that I am immensely excited to play. But because this video is going to be longer than I was initially hoping it would be, I'm going to talk about that demo in another video, which will come out when it comes out, I don't know. But before I move on, just a few little small things that I thought I'd chuck in here. Watching a character eat food at a restaurant is back. 
being drunk works like it used to before Lost Judgment, and if you're confused, it has always worked the same way with increasing your heat generation, but in Lost Judgment, performing any heat action would make you completely sober. However, it doesn't work like that anymore. And finally, enemy encounter numbers are very big in comparison to previous games, especially Judgment and how that game most of the time just had three dudes per encounter. So long story short, a lot of the gameplay elements of this game are taken from previous games, in particular Judgment and Lost Judgment, but I figured I would point them out here because if you're one of those fucking idiots who prattles on about how Judgment and Lost Judgment aren't Yakuza games and you refuse to play them. Well, now you know that those games introduce a lot of good things, and you also know that I hate you, just play them, they're literally the two best. Another unique thing about this game are a lot of its visual elements. Something I noticed when they first started showing off gameplay videos and screenshots was the lighting, which it looks a lot different than previous Dragon Engine games, which in case you don't know, the first Dragon Engine game was Yakuza 6, and then every new game after 6 was in the Dragon Engine, besides Like a Dragon Ishin, which was in Unreal Engine. Now typically RGG studios are incredibly bipolar in how they want their games to be lit, with seemingly every game having a different overall lighting or colour scheme. For example, Kiwami 2 was incredibly green, Yakuza Like a Dragon was incredibly bright, and Lost Judgment was incredibly orange. Gaiden, however, is the best looking Yakuza game so far. It still has some of the classic Dragon Engine blunders like the depth of field and screen space reflections being a bit poopy, but it seems like they've decided to play around with more lights like they did back in Judgment, except this time, hopefully, maybe, probably, it doesn't obliterate the game's frame rate. The lighting style very much is focused on highlights and especially enjoys the use of overall black colours with lots of red, green and blue highlights. You can even see during gameplay that everything is much darker, but there's lots of very strong lights that, again, highlight everything. However, speaking of those early gameplay videos, I don't know why, but for some reason it felt like so much promotional material for the game was recorded in like 720p. Like seeing this same clip of Majima sprinting and then him and Sajima fighting over and over again just made me angry because it looks horribly blown out. Turns out that's just the arena, which just looks horrible, and I don't care what anyone else says. The game features an opening similar to what the Judgment games have, which is different to all the games before 6 where they had it play when you open the game. These Judgment ones were very much showing off the faces of the actors they got and didn't really introduce the story all too well, I mean, especially judgments like, why does Kaito evaporate? But this one is a very, very good way to introduce the game's tone and lead into the game's story. Infinite Wealth, although it's not out yet, is also doing the exact same thing, although as you might expect, that game is a lot more cheery than this one. Regardless, this is a good trend to set after Yakuza 5 got rid of the openings of the games. I mentioned it early in the video, but the new area has a lot of really nice sheen to it. Most likely because it's smaller, it seems like the developers wanted the area to be as jam-packed as possible, so it is absolutely littered with decorations across the board. While it isn't the most detailed in terms of gameplay, it definitely is the most visually detailed area in any of the games, as every single inch is just filled with these beautiful designs. Another visual thing with this game is that, surprisingly, there are a lot of new NPC models. They're always adding more outfits and whatnot to NPCs in the game, such as specifically this Hawaiian shirt dude in Like a Dragon, or this guy here in Lost Judgment with Kaito's shirt. But this time, they just added new ones all across the board, which is quite surprising given how they also have done that with the upcoming Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Given that the game is set in Hawaii, they couldn't realistically just plaster the same Japanese citizens that have been wandering the streets since Yakuza 6 everywhere, and so they created a bunch of new people. However, what I think may end up being the case is that in Infinite Wealth they decided to just do new NPCs in every area of the game, and the Japanese NPCs have probably been retroactively ported into Gaiden, but I know three people will find that interesting, so whatever, moving on. But anyway, this game has an actual setting in the menu for HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range, being the first time that these games have properly done it. Also, the UI of the game is very clean in comparison to previous games, and looks very nice and simple, which I quite like. Now, at the time of recording this voiceover, I haven't gotten to any of the proper dynamic intros where there's animations and shit that transition to gameplay because I don't really have the most time in the world, I'm sorry. But this game does use a new style for title cards which affects story encounters, boss fights, and strength encounters. The game will invert the colours, then slam down the title card with a very nice looking black, white, and Damascus camo from Modern Warfare 2019 coloured flame effect. It's very short and simple, but Damn, does it look good. Now the next few things will be a bunch of miscellaneous things that don't matter but at the same time do matter, so keep watching, please, thanks. In Like a Dragon Ishin, they added a bunch of new features that very much were taken from other recent games. These were all mostly related to accessibility, which is something that the series has been slowly working towards for a few games now. For example, a bunch of subtitle and text related settings. The game's font for most of its text is pretty much the same as all the other Yakuza games, and although the classic Yakuza font, as it's jokingly called, isn't in the title cards, it is in the chapter scenes, 
so it's not completely gone. In dialog text boxes, the font isn't the same, I don't think, as Like a Dragon Ishin's, but just like with that game, they have done a much better job at making it more readable, which my shitty eyes are all for. There's also some more features carried over from Judgment that have slowly been expanded on, being the punk bitch play the game for you options, that do understandably exist for people who struggle with repeated button presses and whatever else, for whatever reason it might be. And then along those lines of making the game more open to all kinds of players, the game has different difficulty settings. Yeah, so does every other game, I hear you say, but ah, you see, the difficulty settings are now called beginner, standard, and professional, but I mean in reality they're just easy, normal, and hard, so it's not actually different, I was just making a joke. There's also something that was randomly added to the PC versions of the judgments, where you can hide the press whatever button to skip dialogue prompts that are always on your screen during dialogue cutscenes, except now it's an actual setting in the menu. So, like a Dragon Ishin at the start of the year had a fair number of technical problems that were quite surprising to see for this franchise. Most of them ended up getting fixed, but you could definitely call that game like a Dragon Ishin, the game with no frames. But then something that never got fixed officially was the fact that the cutscenes were locked in 30 FPS and that the entire game was stuck in 16x9 and there was nothing you could do about it. So realistically, you could also call it trapped in a 16x9 frame. Fortunately, Gaiden has none of those big technical problems that Ishin had, and in terms of bugs, whatever exists now will likely be fixed in some updates. Amazingly, you can disable the control guide in the corner, thank Christ, which you couldn't do in Lost Judgment. You can also hide the HUD, which is probably a PC-only thing, but just like the PC ports of the Judgments, it doesn't work properly for God's sake! because it doesn't do anything in combat. Please fix it, please, 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 please. Now then, a bit of a controversial issue, but this game has not been released and may never be released physically, specifically outside of Asia. That means that in places like here in Australia, your only option is to import the game from overseas or just get the game digitally, which is fine now, but it is unfortunately a known fact that these digital games may not forever be available. This also means that people just can't add their games to a physical collection, and as you may be able to guess from the fact that I am an avid gamer and a Yakuza content creator, you can barely Bet your ass I have a broad physical collection of everything RGD related. I know it's a bit of a flex, but allow me to show off my massive collection of modern physical Yakuza merchandise and games. Uh, yeah, I buy all of them digitally anyway. But another controversial issue that is technically bigger as it affects all versions of the game, no matter the region and no matter the form in which the game is owned, is the lack of English dub at launch. Now, I know a lot of people won't play with the English dub, and even though I am a staunch English dub enjoyer, I don't really care that it's not in either, but I figured I might as well explain a secret little bit of behind the scenes stuff. I'm gonna try and be as quick as possible, but Atlas USA, who basically became Sega of America later down the line, localized Yakuza 0. This team was mostly the same people up until Lost Judgment, and then there was some shifting around and now we got the team who did the English localizations of the Kaito Files and Like a Dragon Ishin. This team, as far as I'm aware, are seemingly the same people who have done Gaiden and are doing Infinite Wealth. I know for a fact that the Yakuza 0 team certainly didn't have an easy time localizing all of these games, even though their release windows initially were quite a long time after the Japanese release of whichever game. But it's understandable that it takes so long, considering that over on the Japanese side, when they want to write text, they just write it. But while I'm oversimplifying things here, pretty much every bit of text in the English versions of each game has to go through a two-step process, being translating, then rewriting the translation so that it makes more sense or sounds better or whatever. But anyway, as the years moved on, we get to the more recent games, which began having a smaller release window for the English team, but fortunately, their experience in previous games most likely made it easier. Lost Judgment then became the first one to have a simultaneous worldwide release for the series, which meant that a lot of pressure was put on the team, but they managed to succeed. On top of this, Judgment then set the trend of doing English dubs, which then meant an even bigger layer of work was needed from this team. So now they had to do the two-step text process, but then also cast people to be these characters, rewrite almost all of the spoken dialogue so that it can fit lip flaps or cutscene timing, record all of that dialogue, do a separate set of subtitles for the dub, make sure it all actually fucking works in the game, then chuck it in as an option that a lot of people won't pick and that those same people will cry about on Twitter. To add to this strenuous exercise, this will essentially be this new team's first dub for the series, although there are still people like the casting director, Keith Aram, who's still involved. This was because Ishin never had a dub, as that would have been a waste of time because the Japanese team recorded like 10 minutes of dialogue for that game, as almost all of it was copied from the original version of Ishin, so the English team would have had a massive workload that the Japanese team didn't, so yeah, that's pretty fair. Another fair consideration is that, again, Lost Judgment was the first simultaneous workload worldwide release, which has now become the norm, meaning that this team don't have the grace period that the Zero team had. Then, another consideration is that Gaiden is massive, even though RGG are pretending that it isn't, and it's releasing two months before what is most likely the biggest RGG game ever made, meaning that again this team will have to do two huge dubs and localizations close together. Then a final consideration is that while I don't know the full list of employees working on whatever game, Sega of America slash Atlas USA have to do English localizations of Gaiden, Infinite 
Infinite Wealth, Persona 3 Reload, Persona 5 Tactica, Meta 4 Refantasio, or have you say it, and Unicorn Overlord, all of which are incredibly close together, and all of which will be fully available with English text, and I don't know about that metaphor game, but all of the other ones will eventually have full English dubs. So yeah, Sega like to do things that, uh, to put it lightly, annoy me quite a lot, but I can't help but feel bad for them, which is why I'm fine with them releasing the English dub of Gaiden, whatever, even if it's like in 2025 or something. Then my final bit of defense for people who probably hate me is that there was a big controversial issue that people are still salty about, being the recasting of Daryl Carrillo, I'm sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce it, who was the original English voice actor for the protagonist Kiryu back in Yakuza 1 on the PS2. He's now been replaced by a YouTuber and everyone thought that he was only hired because he was popular, even though he's not that popular, and also someone show who was more popular was in all of the dubs for Judgment and Onwards, but anyway. A lot of people think it was disrespectful to Daryl as he voiced Kiryu in the original Yakuza and was brought back for Yakuza Like a Dragon only to be tossed away immediately. Now this is all purely a guess on my part, but allow me to tell you the tale of what probably went down behind the scenes when the team were casting for Yakuza Like a Dragon. Alright, so now that that's sorted, we just need someone to play Kiryu. Anyone you got a mind, Scott? Well, I sort of do actually. He was voiced in English back in the original Yakuza game on the PS2. Oh, really? Did you ever play that game? No. It was 2006, so I was probably too busy trying to convince people that Castlevania 2 was good, even though it wasn't. Right. Uh, well, what if we got the guy from the original to come back? We got Bill Farmer, after all. That's a great idea! I think getting Daryl back to voice Kyria will be a great love letter to the English-speaking people that have been fans of the game since the very first one. Well, all two of them, but still. I'm sure with practice and our strong direction that he'll do just fine. I mean, he only speaks a few lines in the game anyway, and this will be the last game he ever appears in. Right? Now you might be wondering how I was able to talk about so much of this stuff so quickly. Well, no, Sega didn't give me early access because secretly they'd rather I tripped over my shoelaces and scraped my knee, but it was instead because I got to play a demo of the game at PAX Melbourne back in October. Quick bit of story time, but when I first got there, the line was too long for the demo, so I buggered off to the opposite end of the venue and played Tekken 8, even though I had already played the closed network test, but I mean, in Tekken I'm a Jin main. After some Tekkening, I went back to the line to play the demo, waited like an hour and a half, then headed inside. Then I proceeded to immediately go into the settings and pull out my phone to write shit down, and the whole time I could feel the deathly gaze from the PAX staff because they probably thought, what is this guy doing? Who is he? Anyway, after my 15 minutes was up, I, uh, uh, went home. And that was my PAX Melbourne experience. But unfortunately, there wasn't really any showcases of the music before Gaiden came out, and while I was playing said demo, I could barely hear the music, so I didn't really know what to expect. But now that I can finally play the game properly, the music is very good. Interestingly, there are a handful of songs from previous games, such as the song Lingering Odor from Yakuza Like a Dragon, but surprisingly, there are even songs from The Judgments, such as Matter of Factly from Lost Judgment. Not too surprising using songs from other games, but it's good to see that there is a lot more Judgment stuff leaking into the rest of the series, because it definitely felt felt like they were going to continue pretending like they didn't exist. Now then, just cause I can, I thought I would highlight this one song, cause it's bloody awesome. That song, as well as all the other battle themes from this game, are the musical equivalent of saying to someone, watch this, and then you get to do one of those uh, bottle flip things and you get it first try. Well, n not really, but they're really good. They're super cool. And while I'm on the topic of music in 2023, man, has there been some awesome music from this year, but in particular, have these two songs, because I want to work them into a video, but can't figure out how, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now it's conclusion time. This video was, to put it simply, a bit of a bitch to make. So if you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing. It'll mean a lot. And maybe it'll mean a lot more to Sega. And they'll finally be like, hey, this guy's based. Let's just give him the game at least like one day early so that I don't have to make assumptions because I can't beat the game in five minutes. And then like a month from now, look like a foolish fool. When I started to play the game, I noticed a handful of changes between the demo and the final release. Most of them were very small, but in all honesty, it could have just been some things that were disabled in the demo or there were some bugs that affected things. I don't know. But some of those differences were that extreme heat in the demo for the Yakuza style felt pretty pretty worthless. Swapping styles was also significantly slower in the demo, but in the final game it feels much faster. There are also plenty of other things I haven't mentioned, but those are mostly spoilery things, or just small stuff that's typically different between every game, most of which will affect side content, or things like shops and skill trees and stuff. But regardless, 2023 has easily been one of the best years in gaming for the players, not necessarily the workers. But there were so many incredible games being released this year. Of the ones that I played, that I remembered, there was Fire Emblem Engage, Dead Space Remake, Metroid Prime Remastered, Ishin, Resident Evil 4, Tears of the Kingdom, Final Fantasy 16, Spider-Man 2, and then there were so many other games that I know people liked that I never got around to playing because of how many games I was preoccupied with. And also Titanfall 2 is back, and I just want Titanfall 3. That's all I care about. But now Gaiden can be added to this fantastic list of amazing games released this year. And so, if you're someone who has, say, a PS5 and you've been holding out all year not really knowing what games to get for it, well, let's say you're someone who's played God of War Ragnarok, or perhaps you got one or both of the Spider-Man games on PS5 before Spider-Man 2 came out, and now you want something new and are deciding between actual Spider-Man 2 or seemingly Japanese Spider-Man 2, well, if you want a game that has intense and fun action combat that's mentally satisfying in so many different ways and is just so enjoyable that it fills you with an overwhelming rush of adrenaline every time you play it, where you'll be on the edge of your seat between every encounter praying that the next one comes sooner, if you want a story that's so captivating that you'll feel like you're there in the world itself, with characters so in-depth and well-written that you'll feel like you've known them your entire life, and cutscenes that genuinely have the same level of quality as a feature-length film. If you want a soundtrack that blesses your ears with perfectly made sounds that'll get stuck in your head no matter how hard you try to prevent it, even though you'll gladly let those songs remain in your brain until the day you die. If you want a game from a company that have had several blunders in the past, but time and time again prove that they know exactly what they're doing when it comes to making a perfect game, with this game being no exception. If you want something that's so life-changing and lore-defyingly brilliant that'll keep you awake every night because you can't help but think about it and can't help but just want to keep playing it again and again, so much so that you wish you could erase your memory and experience it all over again. If you want the best game, not only of 2023, but of all time to add to your PS5 library, then get Final Fantasy 16.